Hey, Steve Zonardo here with Remax Experts, Zonardo Associates. Happy Monday morning. Quick update on the market. Um, we finally broke 16,000 units. So we're at 16,125 units uh, with, we had a total sale of 915 sales. So very similar to last week regarding sales, just about there. Uh, or sorry, 941 sales rather. So very similar, I think there's five sales different. Uh, what I did too is I kind of split to kind of see what's on the market. Is it low rise, is it high rise? It kind of give us an idea. And interesting enough, the low rise sector is 9,154 units and condos 6,971. Usually this is a reverse number. Um, this is rare that you're gonna find uh, low rise, like you know, housing, uh, low rise housing rather than a high rise. Uh, being more of the inventory. So let's do a quick calculation, kind of see the percentage of that. So there's 30% more uh, low, rise, low rise properties on the market right now than uh, let's say the condominium market. So that's obviously our bulk is gonna be low rise, single family dwelling, stuff like that. Uh, townhouse is semi-detached and we're seeing a lot more inventory based on that. Uh, going back in my data, my written data, that I, I obviously my Mondays with Steve, the last time we had 16,000 units was July 25th, the last time. So it, it's, I mean, today's July 24th. So it's literally around the same time where we had the last of the 16,000 units. The only thing is the last time we had the uh, gathering of, of 16,000 units a lot earlier than let's say um, now. So we, we started probably a month later. I think they hit 16,000 units last year in June. Now we're hitting it in, in the end of July going into August. The only difference was, was uh, we started, we had 16,000 units in July, the end of July, and then August we had a switch turn on and then the inventory sort of dropped down. We hit 15,000 units and we started trailing down. So uh, very similar to last year. The only positive part we can take out of it is that we're actually uh, more sales than last year still at this point, which is great. Um, yeah, that's pretty much re regarding inventory right now. Regarding our showings, I'm just having a, a, a high level uh, review of everything because every morning we check every listing and, and how the showings were, especially over the weekend. So we have one listing on the market right now. We've undercut uh, the value of it. Obviously, we're going to try to create a bidding war. We had 12 showings over the weekend, which is great considering a lot of our housing, uh, our current listings right now, not getting any activity at all. So that's great news. Hopefully, that gets into a bidding war. We can get uh, edge over what we're um, what we're aiming for. So we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. We notice even on our bigger listings uh, or even our listings that are stagnant, we got showings over the weekend. Uh, we did a price adjustment prior to the weekend too. That could be the case on three of our listings, inc one including mine. Um, I'll show you a little bit of the internals here, and I'm going to use my property because it's mine, and I, I don't, I can, you know, it's not a client, a client or, or anything like that, so I can review the information with you guys openly. Uh, so this is my my duplex right now. Look at the history of this thing, and you want to talk about, you know, like a seller that's motivated to sell. It's me. I definitely want to sell this property. This is the the. Uh, duplex that we created in 2020 we subdivided two lots off the back we sold the two lots uh, to a developer we got a vtb on the on the on the actual uh, so we lent the developer uh, money uh, to acquire the lot so now we got a vtb which is a vendor take back mortgage which we get a percentage points every month like a, like a rental check on the money that we've uh, lent out so that's great so that worked out now it's it's this duplex that we originally we wanted to create into a triplex that's um, I fell out of favor with it. I got to be honest. I think we can do a lot more with the money here in the, in the state. So it's one of those deals right now where it's like, I'd rather just sell it, uh, lick my wounds and, uh, and use whatever equity that we take out of this property and then move it d down to the States and, and, uh, start, um, uh, making that snowball, but have a look at this. So we listed this originally April 26. So that's how many months now? So May, June, July. So it's about three months. Okay. Um, and I look at all the price adjustments. So originally we listed at $7.99 held back offers. Uh, no offers came to the table. Then ultimately we had at $8.69. Um, then at $8.49 we had it sold conditional. Literally it was a done deal. Then it, it blew up uh, just at the end right when Tiff Macklem, or maybe it was here in June, Tiff Macklem um, basically just did those overnight lending rates. Just he, he increased the overnight lending rate that quarter point uh, surprisingly and then the uh, spooked the buyer, he went off and uh, and never came back. <laughs> so if you kind of see the, the tr transition here, so 799, 869, 849, 829. I don't know what we did here. I think this is when we went back on the market. So we had to cancel relist because it was sold conditional. We went back at 829. Then it's 819, 809, 799. This is our new price right now. So we're at 799 first come, first serve. 
Um, you know, this is what I'm trying to tell clients too. It's, it's you're not the only one doing price adjustments. I mean, that's almost 10% um, more less than what we thought the value of the property was. And to be honest, um, in the height of the market, this was a million dollar property. Now we're at seven ninety nine. I'm I'm hoping to get something hopefully in the in the high seven seven hundreds, and then I can just unload it. But we'll see what happens with that. Clearly, it's a price is an issue, so we just keep adjusting price until we get buyers in to submit an offer. So it has to be attractive to somebody. That's just just that's real estate. So um, you know, just explain this to clients that you're not the only ones adjusting price. I'm in the same market and I'm adjusting prices just as you are. And then I have another develop, uh, building lot that I'm trying to unload too. And again, price adjustment on that over the weekend. Like there's no point. If no one's coming to see the property, it's price is the, always the issue. If you kind of go through the value of the property, you kind of do like a, an assessment of it, like looking at it, uh, not as as a realtor, look at it as an assessment value. Like where, what's, what's the, the detriments? What can hold this property back from selling? Um, and you kind of state the pros, pros and cons. Um, and if you, if there's more pros and cons and you've sort of, you know, either masked the cons or you've corrected the cons and there's more pros then it's price. So even with clearly this, this property in Allison, I know why it's not selling. The con is, is that we cut off two lots off the back that shrank that backyard. So now the backyard became a side yard rather. So it's like 10 to 12 feet off the backyard. So now you have to use a side yard in the front yard, which is still a generous space. It's just clearly that's what's happened if we had um you know 30 40 feet off the back wall there it would have sold already but again so i have to make it attractive with price because that's a con i got to correct it there's nothing else the property shows well it's it's a passive income property does well financially it just and it's got potential for a triplex it's already sorted out for that so it's clearly the the land so what do you do you keep adjusting price um that's that give you a little bit of that journey there a little bit of the bleeding not everything is awesome when you're doing investing and selling real estate right so kind of give you the truth to that um, another thing CPI so our, our uh, consumer price index inflation came down like this is a great number like 2.8 percent like the goal is two percent inflation problem is is that Again, these numbers are all in, they're, they're manipulated. It doesn't matter which country you're in, they're, they're easily manipulated. So what happens is this numbers come down because fuel costs is, fuel costs came down 21.6 percent, which brings that inflation rate down. But realistically, what else? What else came down? You still got that corporate pricing behavior, the CPB, uh, where it's basically corporate greed, where they're like, ah, it's costing me so much to ship product in. Let's just tack X amount on it and let the end user pay for it. And, you know, everyone's making massive profits, but it's robbing us, the, 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 the poor, the middle class, even at the upper at that point, too, um, unless they own their part into this. But ultimately, it's hurting a lot of us for sure. Um, but look at this. So it kind of states here, and I'm surprised he actually wrote this. This is very honest. So it says consumer price index rose 2.8%, which is at 2.8% level right now. Uh, year over year in June, following a 3.4 increase in May, which is so we came down 60 basis points, which is great. While the deceleration was fairly broad based, another base year effect in gasoline price led the slowdown in the CPI. So that's what's bringing the uh, consumer price index down. Excluding gasoline, headline inflation would have been 4% in June following a 4.4% in May. Um, but it says Canadians continue to see elevated grocery prices. This is what we're experiencing now as, as, as you know, like normal people, 10% more on groceries. And then mortgage interest rate costs, 30%. Like, you know, this is it. This is what's failing our, us Canadians right now is, is this right here. So this number to me is bullshit because we're getting, we're feeling the pinch here. So every time they post that the CPI is going down and this whole thing, just kind of look into the details of what's happening because there's still clearly a, a big, big like gap between what's affordable and what's not. And, and to be honest, these guys have already told us that they're going to be um, 24 is 24. They're going to go all the way into mid 25 at these rates. So we still got like a year and three quarters to kind of deal with whatever's happening now. So, um, you know, I have clients calling me, friends, family members, what should we do? Um, I, I, you know, listen, if you're buying and selling and you're trading real estate, do it. That's fine. As long as the interest rate's fine. You know what I mean? If you can carry your mortgage or if, or if the, if the mortgage amount is lower and you're getting a better deal on the pro on the property, why not? Like, I mean, I would still buy, that's not a question and I, and I wouldn't bullshit you about that. But ultimately, if you're going to start investing money back in Canada, buying stuff with, 
you know, like minimum amount of money down and this whole thing. And you're hoping that it's going to, you know, create this um, huge appreciation and, and this, you know, like second to none type properties. Mind you, there's some deals that are out there, no, no doubt. But just be, you know, just, just be wary about that. Just kind of like, you know, make sure you're looking at the investment properly because ultimately if you're just going to buy a simple property and think that you're going to, you know, it's, it's going to be worth X amount in one, one to five years, uh, why don't you just wait? I don't see it. The values of the properties are sort of stagnant right now. There's no real value gain. So you, you have time. I would just kind of, sort of like um, clean up debt if you can. Clean as much debt up as you can. Just I mean, that's where the power is. The less debt you have, the more cash in hand is, the more oxygen you'll have. So that's uh, just the rule of thumb. But that's it, guys. Have an amazing day. We will talk soon. Ciao.